What's going on everybody, it's Edelmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue the Unity Addressable tutorials but this time we're going to be looking at loading and unloading scenes. This is going to be used and actually created by using the Addressables API. And we're also going to be looking at how we can add those scenes to the different groups that we already have and also how we can go ahead and make changes to a scene so that we can actually send those changes to the cloud. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clone the playground scene, which is the one that I created previously. And this one we can just leave it as playground and I'm gonna clone it twice. One of them is going to be level one. And think of it as each level, it's going to be the assets that we see here. And then the playground is just going to have the, basically the ground and also the player controller and the lighting and additional items that are going to be reused for level one and level two. So on this scene, what we'll do is, I don't really want to have the environment. The only thing that I'm gonna have in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and unpack it, it's going to be the ground. So I'll grab the primitive, which contains the ground, and then we'll remove the environment. This one we can just rename to ground. And then that way, you know, when the player loads, it's going to load in the ground, and then we can load level one and level two as needed. And I can also remove that cylinder there. So now if we go back to level one, this one has everything else and I don't need everything else. We can just keep the environment. Just gonna go ahead and remove that. And then I'll go ahead and unpack this one completely as well. And then I'll also remove the primitive, which is going to be the ground. Remember what we wanna load is just the environment. And then I'll do the same thing on level two. We'll go ahead and remove the lighting. We'll remove every single other component. And then I'll also unpack the level two here. And there'll be one thing that I need to do that I'm going to, just so that it looks different, right? We don't want the same level multiple times. So one of the things that we can do is we can clone, perhaps we can clone the tunnel here, and then maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Maybe the tunnel goes all the way back here, and the way the player can go through multiple tunnels. And then I'll also clone this wall here, clone it one more time. And then maybe this one, I'll just clone it, rotate it, and then this box here, I'll just move it up. And that way it looks different, right? We want to make sure that we create a, a different level so that our players don't get bored. But this is for prototyping, so we don't need to spend a lot of time. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my playground scene. It's gonna be your main scene. Everything should work just like it worked before. So if I were to hit play, you're gonna see that the my armature, the player controller is gonna load. The, also the Unity logo should load and also the music should low. So everything in here should work just like it did, you know, it did before. So what we're gonna do is we wanna load level one, level two through addressable. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and also add level two. And then remember these keys because these are gonna be very important aspect of loading the asynchronous scenes that we're gonna need. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna need to do some coding to be able to load those dynamically. And I also need to add a couple buttons on the scene so that we can load those. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and clone the buttons first and we can work on that UI piece. And this is gonna be pretty simple. We just do a button here that is gonna load level one and then another button that is going to load level two. And this one we can just say low first level and then I'll do the same thing on the other one. I'll just call it low sec second level. Let's go ahead and rename that. And make sure that I have my casing correctly here, capital L. And then what I'll do is I'll also change the text so that we know that we're loading. So it's gonna be load level one. And then I'll do the same thing on this other one here. We'll just go ahead and call it level two. And then we'll go back through and then buy into a method that we need to, that we need to create. So we're gonna go into addressable manager, which again, we created on the previous video. And then what I'll do here, and this is gonna be for level, I'll just call this one level loading. And in here, I'm gonna create two different variables. One of them is gonna be bool, clear, previews. We can say, they're called scenes. I call it levels, but I'll just call this one scene. And then I'll just say false. So by default, we're not gonna clear the current scene because we haven't really loaded. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'll just do scene instance. And I'm gonna keep track of the previous scene. That way, if we loaded a scene, we wanna make sure that we clear it the next time so we don't have you know, a memory leak. So I'll just do previews, load it scene. And then this is gonna be, it's gonna be a null value. And now we need to create a new method. It's gonna say public void, and then it's gonna be low addressable. 
And then we can just say addressable key. This is going to be the key that I show you on their groups. So we'll pass that through a canvas button event and then basically that will determine what needs to load. And then the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, do I need to clear the previous scene? But if I need to clear it, so this is going to be true. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and call the addressable. And then it's going to be unload scene because that way if we need to clear it, we need to unload the previous scene so that we don't have, you know, a memory leak like I was saying. And then we'll just do when it's going to be previous load a scene. But we need to get a callback, right? It, we want to know, you know, what if that scene got unloaded so that we can set this value appropriately and also we can determine if we can load the next scene. So what I'll do here, I'll just say plus symbol and then it's going to be my async handle. And I'll just do a lambda here and we just do a semicolon. So what's going to happen is I want to make sure that you do the async method and not the non-async method. So what I'm going to happen is I need to clear the previous scene. So I'm just going to set this one to true. And then the next thing that I need to do too is I need to make sure that I initialize the value here. And this is something that Unity did in their examples. I think it's good not to keep it as null. So we can just say new scene instance. And then we can just log some information that we have. And then what I'll do here is on the in the case that we don't have to clear the previous scene, I'm just going to load the scene, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just change this method here and it's going to be load scene async. And then this is going to ask for the addressable key. So we need the addressable key. It's also going to add, ask for the low scene mode and I don't need this big long namespace. I'm just going to bring the namespace so that it's shorter. And then I'm going to use the additive. And then the other thing that we need to do is we also need to check on the completion, right? We're going to do the exact same thing that we did above it. I'm going to get the async handle. And if you want to do a new method for this, you know, you can do that as well. I just want to keep it short. And then I'll just do the clear previous scene equal to true. So I, sorry, in this case, I need to set it to false because I'm, you know, I'm, there's no need to clear it because I'm already unloading it. But in this case, I need to set it to true. So if we click the button again, I need to make sure that it gets clear. And then what I'll do here on the previous loaded scene, we need to basically grab the async handle and I'll grab the result object, which is going to be the scene instance. And then we can just go ahead and copy this so that we can print some information. So I can say loaded scene and this is going to be the scene that they got loaded. So it's pretty much everything that we need to do in there. What's going to happen is we're going to click on it. We're going to pass the, the addressable key value. It's going to determine do I need to clear the previous scene? If I don't, I just load it. Next time around, it's going to say, okay, I do need to clear it and then I'll load a new one. And we already have a method here because it's, I reuse that from the reload level. So let's go ahead and add a new one and then I'll do the same thing here, remove that one, add a new one. And then what we need to do on both of these ones is I'm going to drag and drop the addressable manager, drag and drop the addressable manager here. And then this one is going to call into the load addressable level. And remember, this is a key that we need. So it's going to go ahead and copy that. And you can rename that if you want that to be shorter. I think I'm just going to use that long name. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. Let's go ahead and look for the low addressable level. And then this one is going to be level one. Okay, so we have our main, you know, our main scene, which is the playground scene. Now, if I wanted to reload the level, everything should work just like it did before. If I want to load level one, you can see that level one got loaded. Let me go ahead and load level two. And now you can see that, and it also says in here, level one got basically removed. Actually level two got removed and then level two got reloaded. And then, yeah, so the same thing on those. So if I wanted to run here, you're going to see that this one is the one that we created with more tunnels. So I can go through here through my tunnels. So this is level two. Well, if I wanted to low level one, we can low level one. And now everything, you know, everything loads correctly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a new build so that we have, because we had a new implementation, we can't really just update the content in the server. So what I'll do is I'll go here and then clean the build. I'm going to clean everything. And then I'm going to do a brand new build because we have brand new implementation at it. Okay, so it looks like that got loaded. I'm also going to go ahead and create a new build that we're going to need into the build folder. Okay, so it looks like we have now a new build. So what I'm going to do as well is we need to go ahead and pull the new content data that got generated. And then we have this new content. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I already have my basically a space in DigitalOcean. So I'm going to go ahead and remove everything that I had before. And yep, let's go ahead and remove all five items. And then I'll drag and drop everything that we just generated. 
drag it and drop it into my folder there, and then just go ahead and set it to public. So now that we have everything in the cloud, I should be able to run my bill. I'll just wait until the upload process finishes. We can go back into my bill. And you can see that the level got loaded. And this is a new implementation, right? This is the one that doesn't have the, low, the level data. Let's go ahead and go into level one. And we have level one at it. And go ahead and go here. I think level two was cooler because I have multiple columns. And let me go ahead and place myself somewhere in here. Let's go ahead and load level two. And level two has the tunnels, right? So we can go here. I also have multiple walls. We have multiple, you know, the multiple tunnels. Mm -hmm. And then everything works. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today as far as like how to load levels dynamically. Obviously the power comes in actually making changes to a level. So if I wanted to make a change here to this level, and let's say that your designer comes in and they say, you know what? I want to add a new model. You can drop in the new model and then make those changes and then just create a new bill. But in this case, it's going to be an update to a previous bill. And then all you really need to do is just drop those files in here, reopen the, the bill and everything should reflect the new changes. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.